Home Slices is Kier with Home Slice Adult and coming to you with my review for Love and Hip Hop Miami The Reunion Part 1. This was kind of interesting. I'm just going to read my notes verbatim because I don't want to make this video very long. Um, I said I was going to do a lot more of my videos with my better lighting and my better camera. So I'm trying to do that for you guys. Um, the problem with that is that it takes a long time for me to edit and upload these kind of videos. Uh, my internet is not as fast as I would like for it to be. But anyways, um, hopefully you guys like the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I would like to thank all of you who have been watching my videos and subscribing lately. I really do appreciate it. And let's just dive right in to this um, review. So um, you all, I'm not big on fashion or anything like that. Um, I'm just now getting to the point where I'm trying to dress a little bit more fashionably. The only person who made an impression on me regarding their outfit per se was Bobby because he looked like a matador. Okay, so that's the extent of the fashion talk for this review. But moving on. Uh, first, we talk about Trina and Bobby. Uh, interestingly enough, um, they had the least interesting storyline. So I guess we start off with them first, you know, the non-important stuff first. So they talk about Trina and Bobby. Alvin joins the stage and nobody cares um, by the sound of the hand claps that are going on in the building. Apparently, Bobby is on Trina's dad's side of the family and Trina does not engage with that side of the family very much. Kind of gives us a little bit of background as to why she came off so mean to Bobby um, because she's just now getting to know him. She didn't grow up with him or anything. And I understand her being on the defensive about trying to let somebody in and trying to provide career help in the music industry to someone who she just found out was her family member. Sounds like he came around for a come up um, and I totally understand more now why Trina was the way that she was. Um, Bobby can admit his wrongdoing in, um, you know, trying to push uh, himself up on Trina as far as his music career too early. And Trick Daddy, you know, is like, you know, I applaud Bobby for being a big man and admitting that. And I'm trying to figure out what Trick Daddy's affinity for Bobby is. Um, does he just respect Bobby for being an outwardly gay man in the music industry? Or is there something more to that? I don't understand why he likes him so much. And we understand that Trick Daddy believes in him regarding his music career. Um, Trina expresses that Bobby is very aggravating to her. And that's when Bobby decides to include Alvin into the conversation. Um, when, you know, um... Alvin hadn't said anything to him. Um, I feel like Bobby was definitely kind of wrong for involving Alvin in this part of the conversation the way that he did, um, stirring things up. But that's what Bobby does. He's a pot stirrer. And so he says, you know, um, you know, I'm Aggie to Trina the same way that Alvin is Aggie to me. And so they get into it. They go back and forth about who's rich and who's not. And then Alvin lunges towards Bobby and doesn't connect. Um, but Alvin wants Bobby to kiss his feet and bow down to a queen and apologize. And we're all like, what? I don't understand. It, Alvin talks about how rich he is, but why is he rich? As far as we know, his only job is an assistant to... Trina and Trina's career isn't that popping right now. So how much assisting can he be doing? I don't know. He must have a side hustle or something if he indeed is so rich. But according to Bobby, he's out here scamming. So we know how the scamming goes. Uh, but moving on, um, they all kind of sit down or whatever. And then come to find out neither of them has a problem with the other. They just get into big arguments and fist fights over not having problems with each other. That doesn't make sense. Uh, there's something in the milk that is not clean. But moving on, we talk about something a little bit more interesting, which is Shay, Pleasure P, and the whole Pretty Ricky situation. So, uh, Pretty Ricky apparently disagrees about the reason why the group actually broke up. Um, Pleasure P cited a, you know, TLC kind of reason that, you know, they did a lot of work and weren't paid for it. And then Spectacular was like, well, we got the money and the money wasn't handled correctly. And then Baby Blue, whoa, it's like, no, we broke up because Pleasure P wanted to be Diana Ross and be a diva. It could be a combination of all three things. SWV has been broken up for years and they reunited and none of them can agree on the reason why they broke up. So I like to say that when groups talk about why they broke up, it's just, um, 
a combination of all the things everybody says um because the truth is somewhere in the middle but moving on we don't care that much about pretty ricky they're apparently working on a new album are you all interested in that because i'm not you know per se i was never really a huge pretty ricky fan um some i can only remember two of their songs really um of course grinding on me and i can't even remember the name of the other one so if you guys are excited about pretty ricky you can put that down in the comment section but i'm just not that excited <laughs> so moving on shay apologizes and she said that in that situation where she had an argument with baby blue whoa she felt like she was not defended and pleasure pete explains his side of the situation and he felt it was more appropriate for him not to stand up for either of them in that moment and that he talked to them separately and explained each person's point of view and they apologized and he handled the situation so well that they're working together right now and i think pleasure p kind of does have a point but that doesn't mean that Shay is necessarily wrong for feeling that he didn't defend her. She's just telling her side of the story. Um, but then Baby Blue, you know, interjects and is saying, uh, you know, Pleasure P couldn't defend her in that situation because he's stuck in the middle between us. And then Liz said something and he was like, I don't even know who you are. He was very aggressive towards Liz, which I do not condone. Um, while I agree that everyone can speak their opinion on any storyline, which is the same thing that Nina said, I felt like Liz's part in the show was so small that she would have done better by not saying anything at all. But that does not mean that Baby Blue gets to talk to her that way. Um, Baby Blue is telling her to, to shut the F up and then Prince tries to come to her defense, which is kind of nice even though we know that they aren't together at this point. Um, but then things get crazy because Slickum tries to sneak Prince for trying to raise up on Baby Blue trying to defend Liz. So um, Slickum is just a little crazy. Um, I don't trust him. <laughs> Something's off. Okay. Um, but whatever. Um, nothing actually happens. Nobody actually gets physical. And then Nina tries to restore order to the whole situation. And she realizes that this is everybody except Shay's first love and hip hop reunion and this is an opportunity for anybody who has an opinion on anything that happened on the show to speak their mind about the situations and their opinions and that Liz was within her right to do so and um baby blue whoa was telling Nina uh don't try to check me on some stuff and Nina got real mad and she was like everybody's gonna get a chance <laughs> everybody's going to get a chance to you know say their piece and you need to be respectful to everybody on this couch get it together i don't know what happened if they cut a little piece out but all of a sudden baby blue Wolf was real apologetic and uh for you know going off on nina or whatever but he apologized whatever so pleasure and shay kind of go back and forth about the defending kind of thing and um uh, they talk about baby blue being thirsty for shay and baby blue was like i'm not thirsty for anybody except trina <laughs> and y'all trina's makeup made her look ghostly for whatever reason when trina first came out excuse me for whatever reason in my mind Back in the day when Trina and Trick Daddy were like real hot, Trina was dark skinned to me. Um, over the years, I feel like her skin has gotten lighter. Or maybe my, because I have never been that um, big on the Miami music scene that I just didn't pay attention that she might have been as light as she is now. But I feel like her makeup made her kind of look ghostly, that it was a little too light for her skin. I don't know what was going on with that. But moving on, we start talking about Gabby. Gabby is not there because she is in Jamaica. Um, interestingly convenient. Uh, was she scared and just didn't want to be there? I don't know. Uh, we'll leave that up to your imagination. But Gabby is waiting for pleasure to visit just her in Jamaica and Nina asks hey um you know are you going to Jamaica to visit her and pleasure P it's like Gabby shouldn't hold her breath because I ain't going to Jamaica and that's the type of crap that I'm talking about you can't trust pleasure P because he tried to embarrass his girl on television forget pleasure P I just don't like him now baby blue calls Gabby a groupie because she conveniently tried to re-enter pleasure P's life when pretty Ricky was getting back together um 
and uh, they talk about the ice cream situation and Shay doesn't care that Gabby didn't know that Pleasure P had a girlfriend and um, Chinese Nikki and Chinese Kitty are kind of trying to check her on that and Shay wasn't giving in um, to it. She was just like, um, you know, well she knows now, you know, if the ice cream wasn't a memo enough. <laughs> then uh she knows now and they're like oh you're just so stupid for not you know for not going after pleasure p i mean they're calling her to the carpet for not going after pleasure p um as opposed to going at gabby and i kind of understood where shay was coming from um i do not think that gabby necessarily deserved the ice cream because she did not know that he was in a relationship but the fact that she kind of came off as a groupie she might have deserved the ice cream in her face I'm just saying um and in the heat of the moment if you caught in a situation like that your first reaction probably is to go after the woman as opposed to the man it was just the heat of the moment in that situation and um I think if she hadn't been so angry um, and really asked questions before acting, then she would have gone after Pleasure P. Um, but it was just the heat of the moment. Y'all know how that goes. So uh, Chinese Kitty and Chinese Nikki were chiming in and Shay said, you know what, just give them their five minutes of fame so they can get off the stage. <laughs> and they didn't like that. Insults start flying. Security comes in and Shay says that we're still trying to figure out what Chinese Nikki looks like. <laughs> That was so funny to me. I was laughing hysterically. I had to pause it a little bit, but it's true. We still don't know what Chinese Nikki kind of looks like. Um, I, I'm still not sure. But moving on, we talk about Malik and Jeffrey. Um, Jeffrey is still trying to make himself look like the victim regarding the way he got slapped by Bobby. But considering that Bobby didn't know the truth of the situation, that Jeffrey had already cheated on him with Malik, I feel like Jeffrey deserved to get slapped and maybe even a little bit more. But uh, moving on, he's using that as a victim to justify his reasons for getting out of the relationship as opposed to saying, I just wanted to be with Malik and the whole slapping thing is a diversion, okay? But moving on, Malik says, you know, me and Jeffrey aren't compatible. And Jeffrey is like, I never heard this. Now, later on, we find out that Jeffrey and Malik flew to New York together and that they were still in a relationship while they were on their way to the reunion. So Malik broke up with Jeffrey right before our very eyes. I didn't like that. Um, Malik doesn't want to talk about it. It's very new and very fresh and very raw because you just did it like 10 seconds ago. Y'all didn't break up before you came here. You broke up with him on TV and tried to embarrass him. And I'm going to tell you why I think that happens. Um, I think that he is embarrassed because he came out of the closet on national TV just to be with a guy that their relationship is not working out. And when your relationship starts the way they're started with um, Balik basically stealing Jeffrey away from Bobby, you can pretty much guarantee that the relationship is going to end tragically. So I don't know what they were necessarily expecting, but karma always gets her man, okay? Um, but moving on, um, I did not like that Malik basically threw their relationship under the bus on TV and Jeffrey is just kind of dumbfounded because he never heard this before. I really didn't like that. But um, y'all, they made Malik look real bad when they played back that footage of him talking about the different levels to gayness and whatnot. Now, I am not a member of the LGBTQ community. Um, I would say I'm, a, I'm an ally of the community. I would say that. What I am going to say is that the things that Malik said were not things that I haven't heard from before from people who are in the LGBTQ community. There are some people within that community that feel that um, there are different levels of uh, being a part of that community. And Malik explained it as best he could, but I don't think he did a good job. I don't think he did himself any favors. Um, nobody was really feeling his explanation. But um, I thought it was very mature of Bobby to co-sign the reasons that Malik had reservations about coming out. Um, and Bobby was very supportive in that way, saying that once people know you're gay, certain doors can be closed for you because other men in the industry will... Um, 
distance themselves from you so that they're not accused of being gay. And all that means is that there need to be more women in the music industry. More women need to come up and be bosses so that we don't have these restrictions placed on people who are minorities. Um, whether they be racial minorities, whether they are women, or whether they are in the LGBTQ community. But moving on, Prince neither confirms nor denies that he is gay. There are questions about his sexuality, but he doesn't necessarily answer them. But something tells me that I might have been wrong about him. I indeed have questioned his sexuality. I'm not going to lie about that. But what I will say is that he handled himself very well answering those questions. So it's possible that he's not. Moving on, we see Trick and Trina perform their song Paradise featuring Mike Smith and um, everybody's feeling the song. I actually like the song and I was one of the people that was like, nobody cares about the Trick and Trina, you know, uh, getting back together TNT situation. And I like the song and I think it's the sample that really, you know, you know, makes it pop for me. Okay, um, I love a good sample. Uh, but Moving on, the song is very catchy. The song is all about nostalgia. They talk about a a lot of things that used to happen in Miami or that still happen in Miami. I think it's very Miami centric but even then I enjoyed the song. I like the song. Is it a smash hit? I don't know. Well, time will tell. Um, but it might have been the best reunion performance in the history of all the love and hip hops. Just saying. Okay. Um, so I'm eating a little bit of crow right now. Them together might actually be something good for the music industry to kind of take us all back a little bit. Okay. So um, lastly we'll talk about Amarala Negra, Young Hollywood, Juju, and all of their mess. Okay, so Amara will not admit that she was unprofessional unprofessional by bringing her mother to a business meeting. It's unprofessional. I mean, in no industry can you do anything like that, including the music industry. And even Trina was like, uh, you know, you got to keep your mother out of it because you're going to allow her judgments and her outspokenness to prevent you from doing the things that you need to do in your business, which is definitely sure. He brings up something about a bed set and asks if um, Amara La Negra sat on his bed or laid on his bed. Now, mind you, he didn't say, you know, didn't we have sex that night? He asked the questions in a way that made Amara look bad and made him look like, <laughs> I'm, I'm the Latin daddy, you know? Um, I don't like him. He's being very snakish and he's backing her into a corner where she has to basically admit that that's something that did happen. We don't get an explanation, but maybe we will on the second part of the reunion. Um, next, Amara goes into her Afro-Latina spill and um, <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently we find out that Young Hollywood does not know the difference between curly hair and Afro textured hair. You guys can see here I have Afro textured hair and it's just a more intense form of curling which is um, kinky and coily. Um, it just coils more as opposed to a curl that's more like ringlets or whatever. But um, he didn't understand the difference and he came off very ignorant. Um, I thought it was interesting that Amara brought up that he is actually banking in or cashing in on this Afro-Latina movement that he didn't even really know about a few months ago and cashing in by selling t-shirts that say Afro Mommy and Afro Poppy. Don't like it. Um, anyway, uh, Amara... Her energy is off. I feel like she's being too loud, too excited. Um, and I understand that is her first reunion. I understand that she's on TV now, that she's getting bigger or whatever, um, as far as her stardom goes. But I feel like her energy was too much. Um, and that she should have really kind of tried to put this more behind her um, so that it wouldn't rile her up so much. Um, so I do think she was putting 20 on 10, not by what she was saying, but the energy that she was giving off. Now Juju speaks up, um, trying to explain um, what all of this Afro-Latina terminology means. He keeps interrupting her and he's being ignorant. And you know, there's just some people whose opinions and thoughts that you really can't change because they are not ready for it and they may never be ready for it. But that's all I'm gonna say about this reunion. We'll talk a little bit about what's coming on the next part of the reunion. Hopefully there's only two parts. Please don't let there be three. But next time, there's a lot of stuff going on next time. And it's making me think that there are three parts, but I don't know for sure. Um, we see Steph LaCour gets offended by Amara La Negra. Baby Blue gets into it with another one of Pleasure P's exes. Prince's involvement with Gabby comes full circle. Um, we see what JoJo has to say. Um, Trina states her opinion about Shay, and Shay ain't having it. 
That's interesting. Shay might have to move out of Miami after this. Just letting you know. Um, Amada La Negra performs. That'll be interesting. Veronica and Amada get into it again. And Jojo was there again. Jojo's parents have a little segment. I don't like that her parents do not need to be here. Um, it's not like she was the Mama D of Loving Hip Hop Miami. So, um... That don't need to be happening. Um, but, um, did Miami Tip sleep with Kiara? We don't know, and we probably never will, but I'm almost certain it didn't happen, okay? Um, Trina finally asked Chick Daddy about that nasty comment about Trina and Dawn being the biggest holes in Miami. Um, and <laughs> lastly, we see that Liz and Prince are over. Um, do we care that much? Probably not. I barely remember them being on the show. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this review. I feel like my energy is up. My energy is different. I feel like this was a really good review. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out some of my other reviews. I just posted um, reviews for Iyala Fix My Life, the two episodes that just came on with Mem Fitz and the Mitchell Brothers. And I I also did a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta so if you're interested go ahead and check them out and I will see you guys next week and next time. Peace out home slices.